Hi guys, in this video we take some real world data from OpenStreetMap and we bring it into Unity and we build meshes from it. And we do that uh, all in one day, but I, I shot it across different videos. My intention was I was going to do it as separate videos, but I decided to put them all together. So the, it's all in here, but there will be links in the notes below uh, to the, the various parts of the the um, the the video, various parts of the, the sort of operation, so getting the data in, doing debug stuff and then drawing the meshes as well. Uh, and of course the links below as well to the full source of the the uh, the project as well on uh, my Bitbucket repository. So uh, all of that uh, is waiting for you after the fade. Alright, so like I said, uh, I had this idea of getting real-world data from a map, and I came across OpenStreetMap. So if I scroll down, uh, and let's go and scroll into uh, Glasgow, um, mainly because I grew up sort of, where are we, Strathbungo, Queen's Park, Prospect Hill Road. Uh, I, I grew up in a small town in, in uh, the west coast of Scotland, but I actually... Uh, my first flat was it was here in uh, just off of a uh, um, well actually just on Clincart Road in Glasgow so uh, that's why I wanted to zoom in here but you can see that, that we've got the roads and they've got whether it's a one-way system and you've got all the names and all that kind of stuff and the really cool thing about this though is that you can actually extract this data quite easily and it's in a fairly good format um, and the reason why I wanted it in, in a fairly good format is because I wanted to be able to um, uh, uh, parse that data and then generate um, uh, meshes and things from it. So uh, I've done a couple of tests. Uh, I'm not going to lie, this isn't the first time I've done this, um, but I'm still going to make mistakes because I, I, I'm, I can't really show you the way that the, the, the system is working, but I, I didn't... Um, I don't have anything else open. I don't have any cheat sheets open. So I'm doing this very much as a, hey, this is, you know, I want to build something and this is a Saturday afternoon and, and I want to, you know, make make something kind of uh, just for the, the sheer heck of it. Much like, you know, somebody would make a cabinet or, you know, stained glass or whatever. Uh, so if you go to uh, openstreetmap.org, you browse to wherever you want to go. I, I actually have another couple of maps that, that I'm going to use, but um, we're going to use this one just now because we can come back and we can refer to this and we can see the the, uh, the various sites and, and how the road is, is formed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you just go to the, the export tab up the, the top there and you see that it's uh, just there. And you can see that we've got the, the train station here, which is just basically just a big long strip of... Um, uh, concrete and there's two tracks either side of it and then we have Florida Street here um, and Bolton Drive and I was I think I was here uh, doesn't matter so um, what you can do is you can click on export and export will create this uh, OSM file which we are then going to view here so I'm going to bring this over to here uh, let me just get two seconds Bring this over to here. Okay, so you'll end up with a file called map.osm. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a Unity project. Uh, and that Unity project is going to open in just a sec. Uh, but while it's it's opening up there, we're going to rename this. So I'm going to name this... Um, uh, I'm going to name this um, Mount... Florida.txt. Now, I want to change the name of the extension because I have to change it for Unity's sake. Um, or do I need to change it now? Because they might have changed that in five point whatever it is. But it makes it easier for us now because what we can do is we can actually open this up in, in a text editor. Uh, close others. Nope. Oh, no, I need to cut that out. <clears throat> So we can open up this in a text editor. Um, where are we? It's already five minutes in, I haven't even got to this, but okay, so this is the format of the file, and you see that it is just it's just an XML file format and it has various 
uh, elements in there. So we have nodes and we have members and we have tags and ways and all this kind of stuff. And we have all these, these node references here. So that's what we're going to be building um, our geometry with is all the data that's inside this file here. And we also have pardon me, this here as well, which is the minimum, maximum and uh, of latitude and longitude. Um, and so um, if we do latitude and longitude, so latitude is the, the one that goes from north to south and longitude is the one that goes from uh, east to west. So uh, if we look here, so here we have our latitudes. So our latitude starts off at zero and the equator goes to 90, uh, positive 90 in the north and negative 90 in the south. And then our longitude goes to uh, 180. So we're going around half the globe in a positive direction. Uh, and then we're going to go um, um, positive to the east and negative to the west. So that's the sort of best uh, description. So that's the sort of, that's the sort of la the, what latitude and longitude is. Uh, so everything that we have in here is in, like if I go to node, uh, you'll see that the latitude is 55.82, longitude minus 4. So the longitude is minus 4, so that is minus 4 degrees from the prime meridian, which is about right because um, Greenwich, which goes bang slap through London, um, the Greenwich area of London, strangely enough, uh, is the prime meridian. So negative, it means it's west of the prime meridian, which is right because Glasgow is west of the prime meridian. And latitude 55 is puts us roughly about here-ish on the map. Um, so it's quite quite far north. Um, you're, you're actually further north in Scotland. People of Scotland, you're further north than you think you are. Um, so anyway, so now that I have that there, I am going to create a new project and I'm going to call this uh, map, uh, map project. I don't know, let's call it um, <laughs> uh, big, big steely car. <laughs> as opposed to Grand Theft Auto. But that's the kind of idea, is that you're taking map data. So I guess it's a, a map, uh, I'm, I'm going to call it map tutorial. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to make it 3D, though. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and, and create that there. Uh, OK. Um, so that's going to read everything in. Okay, and I'm going to create a couple of folders here. So this is going to be resources. And I'm going to create a script folder. And I'm going to create a scenes folder. And I'm going to save this scene inside my scenes folder. Uh, map reader test. So I'm just going to call this map reader test just to because it's going to be a map reader test. Uh, so inside my resources, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that OSM file that I downloaded and I, I changed the name of to mountflorida.txt and I'm just going to drag that into my resources folder. So now I have a resource called Mount Florida. Now what I want to do is I want to create a script that reads that in, parses everything out, and then generates... We're going to generate debug data for that. Um, but we need to understand what the contents of this file are. So to do that, I am going to enlist uh, this over here, which is uh, the format of the, uh, the OSM XML file. So XML just stands for extensible markup language in case you, you, you're not familiar with this. It's just another way to serialize data. So, um, We've been, if you look at the th serialization videos up there, um, then you'll remember that we, we've we used JSON, JSON, uh, to do that in the past. So this one, we're actually going to use uh, XML. So there is actually, I think, a, uh, the JOSM file format, which is this. 
Um, I don't think we're not going to be using this. I'm not entirely sure what this this particular file format is, but the one we're going to use is this one here. Um, so there's various things that we need to know about this, um, or we need to, to capture about this. Um, what we're going to do though is we are not going to use uh, anything else in this node other than the ID and the latitude and longitude. Everything else we don't really need to know about. Um, we might come back and put in some tag information, but the, the tag information will be like a linked list of tags. Um, so, but right now we just want to get we just want to get something drawing on the screen. Remember, your first goal is to make sure things functionally work and we get things uh, displayed on screen. And then the next thing is we we make it work for the particular project that we want to do here. So I'm going to create a script here and I'm going to call it Map Reader. And the map reader is all that's all it's going to do is it's going to read in map data. So I'm going to fire up Visual Studio just now. I'm going to reorient ourselves in the world. Okay. Uh, and we're just going to get straight into the code here. So uh, my file is going to be public uh, string. And this is going to be resource um, file. And that is going to be the resource well, is the OSM map data. So I'm going to do var uh, text asset equals uh, resources dot load text asset resources file. Um, and that should load everything in that we've got. Now, now that we have everything in there, we need to then parse that out as an XML file. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not going to write my own XML parser for all of this because that seems rather wasteful. In fact, uh, Microsoft provides us, or at least the, the, the Mono framework provides us with a thing called an XML document. So we're going to use that instead. So I'm going to use XML document. Uh, doc equals new XML document doc dot load XML txt asset dot text uh, and you'll see that we don't actually have an XML document in here we just need to include the namespace so we do control period and that brings up um, the, the context menu and then we choose system dot XML. Uh, and I will need this, and we'll probably need this as well. So, um, I mean, really, what we want to do is we want to make this uh, a yield. We want to make this yieldable, so we want to make this a coroutine. But for now, we'll just let it stutter and, and, and figure itself out. Uh, okay, so now what we want to do is we want to parse out all the nodes that are inside the document. Now, if we go back to my instance here, uh, which is a, this text file, you see that we have our OSM, so that's the root uh, document. Inside there we have bounds, and then inside there we have our nodes. So I want to um, do set bounds, uh, and then I'm going to do doc dot select single node, uh, and it's going to be OSM bounds. Uh, and this is the path using the slash to denote how the, the hierarchy looks. So if I go into this document here, you see that we have, this is the root document, OSM, so that's slash OSM. And then inside there we have bounds. So we have slash OSM slash bounds. And that gets us our, <clears throat> excuse me, one and only bounds document inside there. Then uh, I want to do get, um, get nodes doc dot select and this time I want to select all the nodes of a particular path so in this case I want to have OSM node so I want to be slash OSM slash node and we're actually going to delve into something called reflection here uh, because I want to make this as well kind of as generic as possible so if you're writing your own XML 
parser, then it, it, it might help you, or it might help when you're processing that. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to get the, so we have relations here, we also have way. Now way is just the, the it's either, if the, the way, the way that this has been defined is, uh, I read the docs before this, this is why I kind of know bits and pieces about this. So uh, the way is defined as having a series of nodes, which is this over here. So we have our, in fact, I'll zoom in here. So we have our, uh, our way, which is a series of nodes, uh, and there's various tags on there that we'll, we'll get to here. So this is a Pasteur Strasse, um, which is a highway, um, I'm guessing somewhere in Germany. Um, and uh, every node there represents a point in space that represents that particular street. Now, if the first node is equal to the last node, which is not in the case in this, that makes it a boundary. And a boundary is just an area which could be a building, it could be a, um, a common ground, so it could be a park. Um, so we're going to have to parse that out as well and, and determine whether the first node is equal to the, the last node. Uh, but only if it's uh, if there's more than one node. Obviously, if there's just one node, then th that doesn't count. So uh, just to, to let you know about that in the future. So, uh, and then we need to get, um, I'm going to call it get ways dot dot select nodes. Um, and this is going to be slash osm slash way because we want to get all of these ways down here. Okay. Um, and um, we don't need an update because we're not going to be updating anything. So I'm going to create methods for each one of these. So I'm going to do control period, generate method, control period, generate method, control period, generate method. And that creates my um, my lists here. So I have my throw exceptions here. Um, I'm going to implement them so I don't want to throw anything. Um, okay. And that's that there. Uh, now I want to create a couple of things inside here. So I want to create a, a serializable folder. Um, I'll call it serialization. Uh, and I'm going to create a uh, OSM node, and I'm going to create another class which is going to be OSM way, and then I'm going to create another couple of classes which is going to be, um, uh, let's call this, uh, actually let's parse out the nodes first and we'll decide what we need to do from this. So I'm going to call this uh, OSM node parser. Um, and that node parser is probably going to end up being a base class, but I'm not entirely sure what functionality I want to have in there, or should I? Okay, let's just do that first of all. Okay, let's do the, let's make it work first of all. Okay, so we want to do um, another one here, which is our base uh, XML parser. Base XML parser. Um, let's call it XML element parser. It's a kind of long-winded way, but whatever. Uh, and we'll make that. Uh, that's going to be inside serialization, which is fine. Uh, but let's make it inside serialization. Um, Let's not have it inside serialization. Let's just have it inside there. So we'll need to do the same thing for here as well. Um, not that there's anything bad with putting it inside a namespace, but it's just that it's we're only going to be using it inside our project, so we might as well just allow it to create the the anonymous namespace. Uh, okay, that's everything in there. Okay, so that's our that's our. Sorry about that. Uh, that's our classes there. So this is going to take in a public um, base XML parser, and this is going to take in an XML um, I 
think it's a node. Is that a node? Uh, let me go back to here, sorry. Yeah, XML node. Um, so it's going to take in that. And this is going to ex this is going to create a T method. Um, uh, sorry, a T class from there. So I've, I'll get to that in just a sec. Okay. So it can be found. So I want to add my using XML. Okay. Now for um, I don't want to create this every single time. So I think I want to have a static constructor that has this in here. So the first time it gets called, we take the hit. And then the next time after that, we we, um, we don't worry so much about it. OK. So I want to have static um, list. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm just trying to think of what we need. What we need to do for, so for each class, we need a list of property, property names and how to access them from the node. Some nodes are in our text. Some are attributes. Okay, so I need um, an internal class. I, I don't want to expose this class. So I want to have um, class um, property details, and then I want to have public string. So when I have the, that there, um, um, do I need that? Uh, I guess it. Am I overthinking this? Maybe I'm overthinking this. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's claw this back a bit. Sorry. Um, Let's just comment that out just now, and let's just do the OSN node and see what functions we need. I think we need to figure this out here, first of all. OK. So public OSM node, XML node, node. Um, all right, OK. So we need our XML node. So our XML node, uh, what does it contain? Uh, it contains. Uh, the latitude and longitude, and it also contains the ID as well. Okay, so our uh, we have public float latitude, public float longitude, set, and then we also need to have public float x get private set. Public float y get private set. Okay. So our latitude and our longitude is going to be there. And then um, uh, we're going to read that in there. So our Attributes are here. Okay, so um, public you on ID get private set. Okay, okay, I think that's everything we need for our OSM node. So our ID is going to be um, Get attribute um, new long, and then we're going to pass in node dot attributes. Okay, uh, and it is ID. Is the name of it? Is that the name of it? Uh, ID. Yeah. 
Okay, so I think we want to swap that around there. So we want to say ID and we want to get it from node.attributes. And we'll generate a method for that. Okay, and that is going to be our T. So instead of U long, we're going to do T there. So we're using a little bit of generic. So I want to say that I want to return, I want to return uh, this type from this method using this. So this is going to be our attribute name inside this collection here. So we're good. right now um, we are going to assume attribute name exists in the collection. So we're just going to mark that this is a to-do. We're just going to um, make sure that everything is there. So I'm going to say that our uh, string value value is attributes, attribute name dot value. And then I'm going to say return convert dot change type. Um, and this is going to be the string value uh, type of T. And I'm going to make that convert to T. Okay. So this looks, if you've never seen this before, this will look a bit, um, a bit like magic, voodoo, whatever. So this one says, okay, I want to get the value of the particular attribute called attribute name. And I'm going to place it inside my string value. So uh, XML is a string. So this is going to be a string. This is not a number. This is a string. The, so the 29888 is a string of characters. We want to convert that into a, an unsigned long number. So we first of all get the string value. Whatever the string value is, we get that back. We then want to try and convert that string value to whatever type we're asking for here. So in this case, we want to get um, we want to get this string value into whatever this type is here, and that's why we use the type of whatever the user has specified. So we want to try and convert that into a U long. All right, and we want to do the same thing for our latitude and our longitude as well. Latitude equals get attribute. And this is going to be a float this time, and this is lat node dot attributes and longitude equals get attribute float. Uh, I think it's lawn. Uh, it is. It's lawn. Node dot attributes. And now we're in a bit of a sticky situation here because we need to get our x and our y values but we um, <laughs> we uh, we don't we don't have a way to do that we need to find some way to convert between latitude and longitude uh, and our x and y because we want to take our latitude and longitude which is you know wrapped around a globe we want to place that on a flat it's it's a 3d surface but it's still going to be flat so um, luckily um, over here uh, I actually have, this is from the openstreetmap.org wiki. Uh, this is written by a chap called uh, Florian Muller, um, based on the C code that was up above there by this guy called David Schmidt. Uh, and I am literally going to take this and I'm going to copy it and paste it into our project. So this is the public static class Mercator projection here. So I'm going to take that. And I am going to create a, in fact, I'm going to put this inside scripts uh, class here, and I'm going to call it Mercator Projection. And I'm going to select everything and then paste in that there. And you see that it's just, it just, it just works because it provides lat to x and lat to y. Uh, sorry, long to x and lat to y. And that's the functionality that we need, which is all this math in here, which I'm sure works because I've tried it and it, it does work. So that's great for us. So when we go to our OSM nodes, all we need to do now is 
we do x equals um, Mercator projection dot long to x longitude y equals Mercator projection dot lat to y latitude. Uh, and you see that it, it actually doesn't like it because we need to convert it to a, a float because uh, these are doubles. Okay, so I just need to check my phone. Two seconds. Um, okay. No B. Sorry, it's been beeping and doing things. Okay. Uh, and that's it as far as the node's concerned, so we can get rid of all of these unnecessary usings. So we have our latitude, our longitude, our x and our y, and that's us parsed out our nodes. So that's the, the nodes part done, because we only need the id, the latitude, the longitude, and that's it. Um, I suppose we could figure out visible is true or whatever, but yeah, I'll just leave it in there just now. Okay. Um, all right, so if we go to map reader, uh, our, that means that we can have um, our get nodes. So our nodes are going to be a dictionary of ulong and osm node. So that's going to be our nodes. And I want to do nodes equals new, dictionary nodes. And then for each node, um, this is our for each node method. So we can do for each XML node and in XML node list, uh, OSM node, node equals new OSM node. We just pass in the XML node. It does everything for us. And then we say um, nodes, so this is our dictionary node.id equals node, okay? Um, and if we set a breakpoint here, attach that to Unity, and then we go over to our, um, our project, and we create a new empty object here, and we call this map, I'll call it map, map's fine. And then we add map reader, and we choose our resource file, which is Mount Florida. And I'll save that. When we run this now, uh, we should have all our nodes in here. And you see that we have all our nodes. So we have our keys, our values, and all our latitudes and longitudes are all inside there. Okay, so we're like, what are we in here? 34 minutes in, <laughs> and we get one thing done. All good. Okay, so that's um, that's that there. We need to get bounds as well. So our, uh, where are we, OSM bounds. So um, I'm gonna have OSM bounds, it's gonna be that. Public, uh, not public. Uh, so our public, our bounds there, so we have our base XML parser. So I think now we have some kind of functionality here. So we can say, um, uh, well, we don't need, we need, uh, we need this to have a base node. So this is going to be a public class base node. No, it's not base node, sorry. Um, this is going to be uh, OSM base, I think. OSM, or sorry, base OSM. <clears throat> okay, so every class is going to be based on this base OSM. So if I get rid of that base XML parser, I don't need that. Uh, we go back to OSM node, and then we take this out. So we cut that put that into base OSM, and you see that we have this attribute collection thing here, so we do a control period, that takes care of that, get rid of these values here, 
and then we go back to here and then we do base OSM. So now our get attribute functionality is now, oh that's no, private isn't it? Uh, that has got to be protected. So we're going to make that protected. So now that's available to our, um, our child classes. I'm going to get rid of that system call as well. So we're tidying things up a little bit in here. Uh, all right, so our bounds, uh, we are going to extend from OS, uh, base OSM here again. And we're going to do public OSM bounds, um, XML node. node. Um, and for our bounds, we are going to have, uh, where we have min... Uh, let's just copy that and then flipping back and forth between the two. So we have bounds, which is min lat, min long, max lat, max long. Okay. So we have min lat, get private set, for max lat, get private set. A lot, you know, a lot of programming is just busy work like this, just typing in endless streams of properties because you're going to have to expose this to to a designer or whatever. So, min long get private set public float max long get set, and then we're going to have. Um, <clears throat> So this is going to be slightly different because we're going to have a public center vector. So I'm going to change that to Unity to add Unity Engine here, and then I'm going to add my System.xml. So our, um, in fact, really we don't. I don't really care about the bounds of this, but whatever we, we can we can still do it. So minlat equals get attribute float. And then it is going to be min lat. Max lat is attribute. Uh, min long. Uh, min long. Max long equals get attribute float. Max long. What is it like? Oh yeah, I need to pass in the collection as well. Ah. Um, and I mean, you can get around that as well. You could actually not <clears throat> not just need that and then pass. Well, whatever. Um, okay, and then we need to calculate the center. So our float x is going to be um, X diff is going to be our maximum latitude, sorry, our maximum longitude minus our minimum longitude. No, we're adding the two together and then we average them out and then divide by two. What am I talking about? Projection dot long to x min long maybe two float and make all of that float. So that's actually our x, and then our y is going to be the same thing again, but <clears throat> it's going to be our flat to y. So that's going to be max lat, and that's going to be lat to y, uh, min, 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 min lat, divided by two. 
And so our center is going to be new, <clears throat> but because our y is our, our uh, height, uh, it's going to be our x comma zero comma y. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want everything to be, or at least I want everything. You can decide how you want to do this, but I want everything to be pivoted around the center point. So I'm going to make all of our nodes, <clears throat> when we draw all of our nodes, they're going to be relative to the center point, which is going to be zero, zero, zero. All right, so that's the bounds there. So I can now do OSM bounds inside my map reader. So my map reader is going to be our bounds and um, set bounds is going to be bounds equals new ombus and bounds xml node. See how making this, you do this and then your class is like 50 lines of code and then you have another class that's a node and it's a certain, you know, 25 lines of code. And then you got your OSM bounds, which is what 30 lines of code, which you can get, creep back down to 28 lines of code. So everything just makes just you make smaller classes and everything just kind of sits neatly together. Excuse me. Um, okay, so we don't need that OSM node parser. That can go. Uh, and the only thing we need to do for this one is the OSM way which is the last thing we need to do. So if I set a breakpoint here, attach to Unity, and then I um, stop that and then run it again. Um, the bounds should be, okay, so there's the center, which is, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's massive because of the, because of the sheer distances involved. Uh, we obviously, <clears throat> we don't want something to be that far out, so we're going to take whatever values we do and then subtract them from there, and then that'll give us our center around the, the, the world zero, zero, zero. Excuse me a second. Um, but let's see if that is actually where we are. So that's uh, 55, uh, so 55, 70, 55, 82, so 709 and 581. Seven oh nine, five eight one. Okay, so that's that, that's good. At least that's uh, that's right. All right, so let's get in. Uh, let's stop that there. Let's get the ways done. All right, so our ways. Um, we. So here we are. Here we here we here 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 um, and you see that this is a boundary because the first node is equal to the last node. So that makes it <clears throat> that makes it a, a boundary. Uh, if it was a road, an actual road here. So here's a <clears throat> excuse me. And then eventually we get to a way. So here's a highway. So for example, here the this node here maps to this node, maps to this node. So the, this is just a just a an actual road. So I, um, we're going to do that now. So what we want to do is, um, first thing we, we want to do is we want to try and get some debug information in here. So the first thing is we're just going to be interested in the nodes that are there. Okay. So our OSM way uh, is going to extend from base OSM. And we're going to do public OSM way. And it's going to be XML node, node. Um, and so we're going to take our uh, information there. So the first thing is we need to get the ID. We need to get whether it's visible. Um, and that's it. Okay, so we need public new long ID. Get private set. Oops. Let's do that up here. Uh, we also need goal visible get private set. So we have. Um, I want to do what I want to do. I want to have um, ID equals get attribute uh, ulong. 
and it's going to be id node.attributes. And then I want to say visible equals get attribute boolean, and it is visible node.attributes. Now, uh, everything else here is um, child nodes. So I want to be able to get all the nodes from there, but I don't want to do this over and over again. So I want to be able to parse this out cleanly. So I want to have a <clears throat> um, pub, uh, public uh, list new long node IDs get product. So I want to have a list of IDs here. So I now need to do node IDs equals new list of IDs because I don't want to I don't want to have anything else in there. So um, I now want to have um, what I want to do here. So I want to do uh, XML node list. Um, NDs, I'll just call them NDs, equals node.select nodes ND. So this will select every single child node that begins with ND. Okay. And for each XML node in, in NDs. So for each node that we get in there, I want to get the attribute of that node that is ref and convert that to a, a ulong. So I'm going to say ulong ref number equals, and then I can use my get attribute function. So I'm going to use get attribute ulong. And instead of passing in this node, I'm going to pass in the child node. Um, and I need to use ref. Okay, so you see where I'm getting this from? I'm getting ref here. And I want to get access to here, but it, this is a child node, and I want to use the get attribute function we created earlier to do that for me. And then this is going to be n dot attributes. And then I want to add that to my node IDs dot add ref node. Okay. So now I have uh, I have all of my node IDs. Uh, parsed out and I should be good to go now. So this is getting all the, the information here. Uh, we are also going to, need to do to do determine what type of um, what type of way this is. Is it a road boundary etc. Actually, we can determine if it's a, a boundary or not. So we can see public bool is boundary because we can see um, if uh, node IDs dot count is greater than one. In other words, we have more than one. Um, boundary is boundary equals node IDs zero. So the zeroth element equals node IDs, node IDs dot count minus one. So in other words, if the first element is the same as the last element, we have a boundary. Otherwise we don't have a boundary. So we can then determine what things to draw. Okay, uh, all right, back to our map reader. All right, so our ways, uh, we are going to have um, a list of OSM ways. Um, and I'm going to do ways equals new, list OSM way. So in our get ways, we are going to say for each XML node, node in XML node list. Um, I'm going to say OSM way, way equals new way node, 
ways dot add way. All right. So we what have we got so far? We have when we start, we grab the contents. Sorry, we create our collection or our collection items for our our nodes and our ways. Uh, we then read in that XML document and parse it out as if it's an XML. Sorry, we read in the XML document, then set up an XML parser to, to, to handle all the sort of niceties of finding things for us. We then created these three methods that go away and get the bounds, the nodes, and the ways for each one of these uh, items. And the bounds, it just gets the bounds. So we take our X and our Y coordinates, we subtract it from that, that does an offset from zero. So we're basically moving everything Instead of being way, way over to the, the right, which is where it would be for um, um, for uh, the, the world, uh, we're going to do it where it's aligned to around the center of our unity world, which is the origin, which is 0, 0, 0. Uh, let me get rid of that private. Um, get nodes. So we go and get each one of those waypoints on the map. We then construct the ways, the boundaries, or the roads based on uh, those nodes from here, and then we can draw things. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, but I just want to make sure that we've got everything in. Okay. So we run it, and we get to the end here, and then we have 26 ways. Okay, that's about right, because we don't actually have that many things in here. So if I go back to... Uh, where are we here? So we've got, we have 26, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, there is probably like 26 things in here. So this is why I want to keep this map up, because I want to see if we can recreate this in, in Unity. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there. Stop that there. Okay. Now inside here, I have my start method, and I'm going to do an update. Uh, and the update is just going to draw debug lines for for each of those ways. So I'm going to say for each uh, way in ways, if way visible. So if it's visible, then we're going to do something about it. Um, all right, so for each way, um, we're going to draw from the first element to the second element and so on, okay? Um, but we're also going to determine if it's a boundary as well. So color uh, C equals color dot cyan. So if it's a boundary, we're going to draw it as cyan. And if it's a road, we'll draw it as, or if it's something else, we'll draw it as a as red. <clears throat> so if uh, is bound, so if it's not a boundary, then C is going to be equal to red. Red for roads. Cyan for buildings. Okay. Now we do four int i equals one i less than node ids <clears throat> dot count i plus plus so our node is going to be um node sorry uh, it's going to be we want to draw from the first point to the second point and then keep going so i'm going to say uh o s m node point one is um nodes w dot node ids i minus one um so i'm getting the first node because we're going from it's a zero based index so we're going to go from the the second element so we want to be able to get the first element to draw to the second element and then i want to do the same thing again but this is going to be for point two so this is going to be i and I now want to draw a line between those two points. So I want to do debug dot draw line uh, point one point two. Um, 
and you can see that that's not exactly how we do things around here because those are uh, just the points there. So we're going to have to change that to vectors. So this is going to be vector um, um, Let's cheat. Okay, let's go to OSM node, and then we can do um, public static. Um, how do we do this again? Is it override uh, oper vector three operator. Uh, vector three operator um, OSM node node. Uh, so I want to convert from I want to convert from this value here operator um, equals. So I want to yeah I want to convert. So when I when I do equals and I take in an OSM node, I want to convert that to a vector three. So I want to say return new vector three, and this is gonna be x comma zero comma y. Uh, in fact, it'll be node dot x comma zero comma node dot y. Okay, because I wanna be able to convert that, why is that saying? What am I missing? Um, um, if in doubt, look it up. Where are we? Uh, vulnerable operators. It's not overload. I mean, it's not overload that I'm looking for. It is. Um, oh, it's uh, implicit conversion. Um, C sharp. Implicit. I think it's implicit. Okay, my bad. Uh, where are we? Yeah, implicit operator double. Okay, so implicit. Implicit operator vector three. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so I want to convert from a node to a vector three, and I don't, I don't want to have any hassles or anything doing that. So I want to take um, so vector three, uh, vector one. So our vector, our, our vector is going to be the, the current position minus the origin. So if I'm at um, five and the origin is at three, then we want to move that five to the three. We want to move that five to back. So I want to say vec equals, um, and this is going to be bounds dot center. So it's going to be P1 minus center. Vector three v two equals p two minus bounds dot center, and now I can do my draw debug dot draw line vector one vector two. Okay. So this this here this bit here is allowed because I created an override uh, an implicit conversion between this type, an OSM node, and a vector three. So now any time I say vector three equals OSM node, it goes, all right, okay, I know what to do. And it calls this method here. And then this method then generates a vector three from here. All right, okay, well, let's 
give it a spin, see what happens. Right, so this is inside the update. Um, so we should get something drawing, hopefully. So we get nothing here. This, I was expecting that, but we should get something inside the scene. So if you look inside the scene, now we see that we have our roads. So if I kind of zoom like this and then zoom out a little bit, and then I flip between here and here, and you can see that we have this structure here. So that's where I used to live, this road here. And then there's a little outhouse garage set of things over here, which is over here. And we've got this kind of sweeping tenements over here. And even over in this direction here, we actually have the platform as well. Now, why everything is white? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I know the reason, uh, and you're going to love this. Uh, it's because I forgot to set the color. <laughs> so I want to put in C in there. All right, okay, so now everything should be uh, nice, neat, and uh, so we run. Uh, and again, we'll see nothing there, but we click on the scene, and there we go. Now we have the the cyan is the the uh, the boundaries, and the red is the roads. Okay, so we've got we've got at least something uh, displaying on screen anyway, um, <laughs> which is always good. And this is from live map data as well. So uh, what I've done is uh, just to prove that this is this is not canned in any way. Uh, I have my resources over here. So I went to, um, this is the Epcot Center in OpenStreetMap, and I've already uh, exported this. So if I go over to here, uh, and I change this to Epcot, oops, I change this to uh, Epcot.txt. Yeah, I'm sure I want to change that. And then, uh, why did I do that? And then what I do is I drag and drop that into here. And then I go to my map and I change that from Mount Flora to, to Epcot. All right. And then we press play. This will take a little bit of time to do it because there's a lot more nodes. Um, and this is why you need to have that, that um, enumerate uh, the uh, coroutine in there. But when I click on scene, you'll see that if I zoom out, There you go. I mean, we got half of Florida here. All right, so if we go back to this map here, uh, rather than using the the Epcot one or the <coughs> the the Toronto one, um, and the reason why I want to use that is because it's actually quite a small uh, data set that we have here. Uh, I hope. Uh, let me just check here. Uh, where are we? So we have that in there. Um, let me just close a couple of windows here. Uh, yeah, it's this one here. Okay, so uh, we have this one here. So I don't know if we have any height data, but we certainly do have buildings here. So it does know that there's buildings here. But every every piece of data that we have here, uh, close all windows. Uh, every piece of data we have here does have certain information here. So it's got, um, like for example, the, the it's a residential highway. Uh, it's called Florida Drive, it's one way, it's surface, it's asphalt, that kind of thing. Uh, there are other things as well that, that uh, uh, there's other information that, that you sometimes see as well, which is like how many how many lanes there are on it, that kind of thing. So uh, it's always good to have these things. So this one here, I'm trying to find... Um, where are we? So this is Cathcart Road. Oh, Cathcart Road. Okay, so this is buildings, apartments. So this is a way here. Uh, so some of them have a height and some of them don't have a height. So what I want to do now is I want to check to see if which ones are uh, which. So this is a building, 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 um, building. 
and this is a highway. Okay, so I'm going to look for k equals building inside the tag. So, uh, reload all. Yeah, sure. Uh, all right, so that's for, um, so if it's a boundary, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, XML node list. Uh, tags equals node dot select nodes. Uh, nope, select nodes tag. So I'm going to go through each one of those tags. So you see we have a tag there, and I'm going to check what the key value is of that tag. So I'm going to do for each um, XML node T and tags. Um, so the key is going to be get attribute. Uh, and it's going to be a string because I'm just going to convert it as a string. And the attribute name is going to be key and it's going to be t.attribute. Um, if uh, key equals building to do building things, uh, else if key equals, and this is going to be a highway. To do highway things. Now, to be honest, we probably don't. Uh, let me just go back to here. So we go to resources, um, and let's go to the Toronto map. So if I uh, open this up here and do a search for way. So there's the gardener. So that's a bit of the gardener there. And this is residential, Sullivan. Um, so there's a tram. So if I do K equals building. So there's a tag there. Yes, built date. So you see that some of these have more information than anything. So this is the Four Seasons Centre for Performing Arts in downtown Toronto. And it tells me other things in here as well. Uh, does it have... User ID, right, Toronto province area. Um, so this has, this has something called levels. So I'm gonna see if the, if the building has got levels, then we're gonna take that value and multiply it by 10 because each story is approximately 10 high because I wanna get the height in this, this one. So if I go to my way, so if key is equal levels, then I'm going to say that uh, public um, float height. So this is going to be the height. Now the height's going to be uh, in meters. So my height is, uh, so what's 10 feet in meters? I don't know. <laughs> uh, 10 feet in meters. Uh, 3 meters. Okay, so we're going to multiply everything by 3 meters because the reason why I say meters is because unity makes everything in one unit is equal to 1 meter approximately. That's what most people do. So if you have a, if you have a figure that's two, 2 units, 2 unity units tall, they're about 6 feet. It's 1.8 meters. So our building things is going to be height is going to be 3.0 meters multiplied by get attribute and this is going to be um, where's our tag? So you see our tag is there and that's going to be uh, sorry this other one here. I was in this one here. So our tag is going to be V in this case. So get attribute, and this is going to be a float, uh, and it's going to be V, uh, which is going to be in the tag attribute. Okay, so that's going to be the height there. Uh, all right, um, but occasionally it isn't that. Sometimes it is actually gives you it as the height. So if I do building apartments, 
So yeah, so this one is all levels, so that's 47 levels, so that's quite high. Um, building levels is three. Okay, I think for the for this one here, we're, we're ending up with building levels. Yeah, okay. Um, but occasionally it does get it in height. I have seen it in height as well. So I guess we'll need to figure that one out. So if I do... If I open Epcot, I need to do a search for building. Okay, there you go. There's the height is 55. Now, I think height is 55 feet. Um, but again, sometimes it has it as meters. So um, I'm assuming because this is in uh, this is American, it's going to be height is going to be um, in feet so I'm going to change that to height so uh, so if height then height equals and then that's going to be in feet so for every feet that is um, that there Uh, time get attribute float. And again, we're only doing this rough and ready because there's a couple of. It, sometimes it has it as meters, so we'll need to figure that out. Um, you know, attributes. Uh, okay. Otherwise, uh, we're going to default. So if there's no height, we're going to default it to three meters. Um, so I'm going to put that up here. Height equals three point zero. So I'm just going to default it to three meters. Because what I want to do is, for every way, I want to create a game object in the middle of it, and then I'm going to create walls that go around that that object. So, um, okay. So inside here, uh, I'm going to debug those lines there, but I am going to say uh, if uh, this is the, the update. So in the update, I'm going to keep the update just now because I want to be able to draw, I want to be able to still see things. So I'm going to do the start there and then I'm going to do uh, create buildings. Um, and then there'll be another one called create roads, which is almost exactly the same thing, but we need some additional functionality there. Um, in fact, do we want that? In fact, let's not do that. Let's actually just expose it uh, outside here. So uh, I want to say, um, let's make this public uh, like that. Um, which it won't like because it's inconsistent. So I'm going to change that from public class map reader to just class reader because <clears throat> it's going to be um, public inside this assembly uh, but not public outside the game because we won't we don't want people outside of it to to get access to it so um, I, mean in, hmm, I mean strictly we should change it to internal but whatever uh, public's okay if you want to be more perfect then it should be internal and what I want to do is I want to hide this from the inspector. I don't want uh, I don't want people playing with this, these values here. I just want to be able to do that there. Uh, but I also want to have a public bool is ready, get private set. Uh, because I don't want people to access this map reader until the data has been loaded. And the data gets loaded uh, at the very end here, so it is ready equals true. Uh, all right, and we can tidy that up there, tidy that up there, and okay, that's good. All right, so we have our map reader there, and I also want to have a um, road maker, and I also want a um, what else do I need? I want a 
building maker. Uh, and again, get rid of these, and this is mono behavior. Uh, requires component type of map reader. So we want to use the Unity engine for that. Um, it, oh no, is it requires type? Require, require component. Uh, require component that. And we want to do I enumerator. Um, while, oh, in fact, this is going to be a map reader map map equals get component map reader so i don't need to check if it's null because it ha can't be null because i require the component and then I've, i do need to make sure it's it's ready so i don't want to say while um map is ready turn null um, to do process map data to create buildings okay and I want to add that collection there all right and then almost exactly the same as that uh, I also want to have um, I want to have almost the same thing but for my road maker so this is going to be a road maker uh, and it's going to be exactly the same thing as well and now on my map, if I stop that again, <clears throat> if I stop that again, I uh, click on map, and then I add my uh, road maker and my building maker. All right, so my road maker and my map maker are the same there. Um, Now again, we'll probably have to do the same thing with a base class, but we'll start off with the building maker uh, to start with. Um, and this is going to be for each. Um, actually, let's do um, var way in map dot ways um, find all. And this is going to just bring out all the ways that are this is a nice one of those nice little lambda expressions return w dot is boundary uh, so we want to be able to find all the um, oh, I'm missing a bracket here okay, there we go uh, we want to find we want to get all the we want to get all the the ways so all those nodes we want to get a list of all the nodes that uh, are boundaries because those are the the buildings okay but that's not strictly true is it because if i go to toronto for example uh, i really should check to see if it's a building rather than a boundary so i will check for that inside my mm, osm way reader so i want to see um, else if key equals building is building equals true uh, is building equals get attribute uh, string uh, value key dot attributes uh, it says yes <laughs> uh, equals yes and then I create a property for this so I have public pool get private set all right so then I have my is building up here so I know that it, it, it could be a boundary a boundary like I said is just a park or you know a, a zone or something that that you might not necessarily class as being a building so I, I'm only interested in buildings. So 
uh, back in here, I want to say it's a building rather than uh, an actual um, um, a boundary. Okay, so now I want to find the center of all those points. Um, so I want to find everything that's a, a building there, but I also want to find the center of it. So vector three center uh, or get center. Let's spell it properly, shall we? Uh, and I want to specify the OSM way, and this is then going to generate a vector three. Now, how do I get a vector three from this? Vector three total equals um, vector 3.0 return total there you go, done <laughs> except what we want to do is we want to do for each um, bar id in way dot node ids so I want to get all the ids in there um, and I have a reference to my map up here so I want to say um, total equals um map.nodes id so remember that the, we have a conversion between our osm node and our vector3 so this is perfectly legal even though it is actually a collection of OF, osm nodes so we're basically just adding those uh, to there and then at the very end we are going to do total divided by way dot node ids dot count Okay, and then that's going to give us our average median point there. There's lots of ways to do it, to weight it and all that kind of stuff, but this is the easiest way to do it. Um, if uh, if way.nodeids.count equals zero, return total. So um, we'll bail out early if if we don't have a if we don't have any nodes there. So um, uh, I mean, we could do return is building and way dot node IDs dot count is greater than one. So we can we can make sure that we're we're only getting node IDs that are greater than one. Then we then we can just uh, get rid of that because at this point we know that we have our ways that we have in there. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to construct the walls now. The problem uh, where do we have here? So the problem is. Um, if you have, um, so if you have a triangle like this, so I'm drawing a, uh, I'm drawing a wall. Now a wall is going to have, uh, I'm just going to draw these here. So a, draw, a, a, a wall, sorry, this is a terrible diagram, never mind. Uh, a wall has two triangles, so it has this triangle here. Uh, and it has this triangle over here. So we have two triangles here. Uh, we have four nodes inside here. So we already know these two nodes. We have a start node and an end node. Uh, we have to calculate the other two nodes. The only problem is we don't actually know um, we don't actually know which uh, which um, uh, which way the winding order is because we don't know the order of the nodes that we appear. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm actually going to create um, a, a number of triangles. Now, the way that we do it is, and I'm going to follow the instructions on here, but Unity has uh, a great uh, piece on documentation here about procedural mesh geometry. So if you do a search for procedural mesh geometry, uh, or actually just, um, I'll, I'll paste this in here actually. Uh, so this is the, the URL that you're looking for, uh, this one here. Um, if you go to that website there, um, then it'll take you to here. So what we want to do is we want to create a mesh filter and we want to create a game object. So for each game, so we want to do a game object, um, uh, we'll just call it go equals new game object. Uh, and the position is going to be get center of the way. So that's going to be our, our local position. So everything is going to be based off of this position in space. Um, now, uh, that means that 
we are going to have to calculate the points relative to there uh, because we don't want to have um, well let me, let me make this a little bit easier so we want everything to be in local space so right now the building is not in local space so our vector 3 um, so this is going to be origin or local origin is going to be get center um, way so everything is going to be calculated every point is going to be calculated as an as a distance from this local origin and i'm going to translate everything to that center point okay so go dot transform dot position equals uh, local origin uh, because all our all our mesh data is going to be um, based on the point in space that we have uh, the the local point in space rather than the translated point in space <clears throat> because the idea is that you'll be able to take that building and move it someplace else if you wanted to or demolish it or whatever you want to do with it in your game <clears throat> excuse me I'm losing my voice <clears throat> Okay, so now that we have that, we need to have a mesh filter. So mesh filter uh, equals uh, go dot add component mesh filter. Uh, we also need a mesh renderer. Uh, go dot add component mesh renderer. Um, and then we have go back to here. So this is it given an example of, of creating a quad, which is what we want to do. So this is our quad here, which is our vertices, which are is uh, these values here. Now, we're going to be slightly different from this. So uh, this is the, the indices. Uh, these are the vertices and these are our indices. And we need to do this procedurally for each wall in our uh, shape. Now, our shape... Um, it is, you know, it's this line here, 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 and eventually we end up with something that's kind of like that. So our quad is going to be from two points. So we're going to do almost exactly the same that we did for, if you go back to our map reader, uh, you see down here that we did this here, which is our nodes, and then we did our vectors. So we're going to grab this code here, and we are going to... Um, put this in uh, here and we're going to say for int i equals uh, 1 i is less than way dot node ids dot count i plus plus um, and this is going to be uh, map dot nodes, map dot nodes, map dot bounds, um, and instead of map dot bounds dot center, um, we are going to do it from the local origin, okay? Because we already have it inside there, so our w dot id is going to be our way. ID. We don't ID. Okay, so vector one, vector two gives us the, the two points at the bottom of the line. It doesn't give us any height. We need to get the height from that. And the way we get the height from that is we say vector three, uh, vector three, <laughs> v3 equals point one plus new. And then this is going to be vector three. Um, uh, sorry, vector three is going to be vector one plus new vector three. And then this is going to be the height components. So that's going to be zero comma way dot uh, height comma zero. And vector four v four. So this is our fourth point. So that you get point one, point two, point three, point four is going to be vector 2 plus new vector 3 0 comma way dot height comma 0. 
So, in my, sorry, I need to get my image up here. So in this diagram here, right, I'll bring this up here. So in this diagram here, uh, this is, oops. So this is P1 and P2. So these are our nodes that we get in from the file. So that's P1 and P2. So these are the, the ones we get into the file. We then generate from that vector one and vector two. Okay, so that's vector one and vector two. And what we're doing here is we're creating our vector three and vector four. Okay, and this bit here I'm breaching copyright here. I'm using Dave CAD um, from EEV blog, but whatever. Um, so this is this is the the height uh, that we get from our uh, from our way. Now remember, we're either saying it's either three meters, which is a building, uh, or it is um, whatever the height we we get from the the map. So this will this will generate our building. So this is our uh, our items, our our vectors here. Okay. And from there, we need to create quads. Now, the quads themselves, uh, the quads themselves, we need to create, uh, if I draw a diagram in the code here, um, you'll see that we have our, actually, it's probably it's probably more complicated than it's worth drawing it that in there. Uh, anyway, we'll just work out the, those points there. So what we need is, we need a uh, list, um, list, all right, uh, I totally screwed this up. Um, okay, um, apologies, but um, yeah, I don't know what happened. I, I, when I was flipping between the major channels, the, the, the main thing and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I missed out the code. Um, so here it is here. So what, what I did was um, probably remember me doing this bit here because for you it was like two seconds ago for me it was like an hour ago so i missed out all this thing here so what i did was i took this diagram here and i created this code from it and this code here uh all it does is and i'll, I'll, I'll repeat this because I, I when i was typing it it, it worked fine but I, uh you, you don't get to see any of this so unfortunately i do apologize i missed out a whole thing so what I want to do was, or what I what I have to do is, uh, I have to create a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. Uh, I assign it a material, which I, I did up here. So I have this public material up here. Um, and then what I did was I created some um, containers uh, for the, the vectors, for the normals, and for the indices. I then go through each one of those nodes, much like we did for the map reader. In fact, I, I just copy and paste this code here um, uh, into here. Uh, and so much like that, I go and I create the, the vector. Now, the vector position is based on the local origin of the object. So in this case, the local origin of the object is the, the center point from the building. So if the building is, you know, way over and over here somewhere, we want it to be local to here so that so that when we move when we move this object anywhere wherever we want to move it it's it's points are relative to its local origin uh, but we actually translate it to the center point of the building um, in real in world space um, and then so we go through all the the points there and remember all the points in the map are just two dimensions they are you know, a point in space and a point in space. And we want to draw lines between those two points in space. But we also want to give it a height. And that's what this bit here does, is it creates those four vectors from the initial position. So these two points here, are the point one and point two, are the initial positions inside our node list. And then the other two points are those positions, vector one and vector two, plus the height of the building. So whatever the height of the building is, we then uh, determine how high up we go. So that's that's what this part is here. We then add those vectors in there. Now we have the vectors in there. We need to create the triangles. Uh, this is just the normals part. 
the triangles are created using these index values. So it's whatever the last, it, the, the index to that particular vector that makes up the triangle is based on the four vectors we just added to the list. And the four vectors we just added to the list, are, um, their indices are calculated by index four, three, two, one, based on where they were placed inside the list. So it's the last four vectors, which makes it a lot easier to calculate the triangles. And we needed to make the triangles um, so that they've got to go clockwise and they have to go counterclockwise as well, relative to me there. So clockwise relative to me, counterclockwise relative to me. So that's why we had to do the indices here for the first and second triangle. And then we do the exact same triangles, but we do them in reverse. So we do them counterclockwise. And what that means is we then end up with two... Um, uh, two triangles that are but or sorry, two quads that are butted up against each other. One of them is facing this direction, one of them is facing that direction, so you don't see through them. And then at the very end, I then set up that mesh to be whatever the, the vertices is, the normals and the triangles, by converting it to an array. And then I use yield return null because I want to... Um, to um, put the buildings in piecemeal. Um, and then finally, I, th I think this is covered, but I, I can't remember, but this center here, all it does is it just takes the, there's ways to, to calculate this, but this just takes the center point um, by calculating all the points in the, the boundary and dividing by the number of points. That's it. And so what you end up with is, uh, I also did this as well, where I took the, this is, um, you probably recognize this, this is Manhattan. Uh, so you see you get Bowling Green down here, you have the uh, Broad Street, Wall Street, all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is the this is a southern tip of Manhattan Island, uh, and I brought this in uh, as a test, so that when we we press play here, you start seeing the buildings coming in. Because some sometimes there's, there's not enough buildings where you live um, <clears throat> to sort of give you a, a good idea. But you can see from here that this is indeed the sort of southern tip of of Manhattan Island. Uh, and you can see here all the, the, the piers and things. And if I go back to the map there, uh, you can see that you've got the uh, <clears throat> the FB, FDR tunnel, the uh, Cary tunnel, all that kind of stuff is, is all in here as well. So, uh, yeah, I do apologize. Normally I, I wouldn't cut um, bits out, but um, yeah, that's, that's all. That's the reason why is because I, I lost it. Let's try... So now we have our, uh, we have this uh, over here. So let's try and see if we can figure out if we can get some roads up in here. So we're going to do the same thing again. Um, <clears throat> but this time I want to have, uh, let me create another material here. And I call this, um, Call this basic road, and it's going to be kind of uh, grayish, I guess. Well, maybe we can get a texture on it actually. Let's see if we can find a texture. Um, road texture. Images. Um, okay, so here is. Um, here is high res city road textures. Okay. Um, that looks quite nice. Tileable dark stone texture. Okay. So this is going to be stretched a little bit um, because we need to figure out how many, uh, how big it is. So uh, in reality, your, your length of road, we're going to have to, let me make sure I've got this. Let me make sure that I'm actually in view <clears throat> this time. Okay, I am. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to... <clears throat> so I want to... <clears throat> probably use this. <clears throat> <clears throat> so 
So ideally, I think we want to use this this one here. Let's see if we get access to this. So this is Deviant Art. This is from. Uh, this is from uh, R. Falworth. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. So I'm gonna borrow this. Uh, hope you don't mind. I see they've got tons of stuff in here. So they've got this here as well. So this is a uh, Robbie Falworth. Um, okay. So uh, I I quite like this. Um, I don't know what the what is the. Uh, What's the deal with copyright here? Um, so people have, people do download this. I don't know. Uh, do, you, do you download it? How do you? What do you? I've never used Deviant. Uh, I've never used Deviant Art before. Uh, okay, so you buy that. You buy this. Is that how this works? People let me know here. <laughs> okay, what happened? Uh, uh, what? Okay, that's what happened. Okay, not very good at this. All right, here we go. So download, okay, this is perfect. I just want to download this. Right. Okay, so, um, so I'm gonna save, uh, save images, and then I am gonna save that to um, yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to save it there. I'm going to save it to downloads. Save. And then, um, I want to copy that across into here. Import it. And then the basic road, um, and then... Where's my just uh, drag it in there? I don't want it to be shiny though. Um, hey, I want it to be kind of like that. That's good. Okay, that's my material. That's my basic material there. I think that's that's good. Um, <clears throat> we'll need to figure out how to stretch it or like get the UVs to, to map onto there, I guess. Maybe we can figure that out later on, but it's a good start anyway. All right, so back in our map tutorial here, we're gonna use the same thing for our road maker. So our road maker starts off with this here, so to create roads. So for each road, how do we do this? We did this uh, here, so for each way, um, it's not a building, so the way, so way is road. So we're gonna uh, make sure that way is road, and the way we're gonna do that ha, is um, k equals highway, I think it is. Okay, so k equals highway, and they have this thing here called lanes, uh, I'm going to leave that up to you to decide how you're going to do that. Um, I'm going to completely ignore that, but I do want to see if it's if it is a highway. All right. So in my way, uh, I want to see else if key equals highway is road equals true. Okay, so we don't have that property in there just yet, but we will have it in just a second. Public row is road. So that's it. All right. So now inside our road maker, this is now going to be valid. So if it's a road, we want to then draw the road on there. So we're going to borrow some code from our building maker, which is we want to uh, make it as a, as a separate object. Um, and we want to create our mesh renderer on there. Okay. So we have a public material road material. <clears throat> and you see that we have this get center, which is our uh, center point for our, our roads. 
this probably um, probably doesn't make a lot of sense for roads, does it? Um, eh, eh, I think we'll leave it. Okay, so we'll we'll call this. Um, we're going to create another base class called Maker Behavior. Um, or infra, infra, infrastructure, infrastructure maker, infrastructure maker, behavior, All right, and then we want to create a, <clears throat> a new item here, and it's a class, and we can call it infrastructure behavior, and that is going to be... Um, that's going to be a model behavior using Unity Engine. So we're going to use Unity Engine, and infrastructure behavior is going to be Road Maker is going to extend from that, as is Building Maker. So Building Maker is going to extend from that, um, and uh, we're going to take this out of here. So the get center is going to get taken out of here. And we're going to move it into our base class. And our base class is going to have our map. Um, so void awake. Get component map reader. So we want to get the map reader from here, which means that our this here, this actually goes away. And we put that inside our infrastructure behavior. Again, we're making other classes a little bit easier because then we want to maybe have like a boundary reader and a boundary maker, that kind of thing. So our building maker doesn't need to have that there. So we don't need to have uh, this. We just need to wait for that to be started. Uh, get center needs to be protected because we want it to be able to access it from this class and from other classes. Um, we can mark this as abstract as well because we don't want it to be, we don't want them, anyone to create an infrastructure behavior, we want them to implement an infrastructure behavior. behavior. And then um, our final thing is our road maker doesn't need map, and it doesn't need map there as well. And we also don't need to require component because the base class requires that component, um, which is there. Okay, so we're tidying things up as we go. Uh, all right, <clears throat> so our point, um, our point is gonna be the same thing again. So let me make sure I don't screw this up this time. All right. So much like we have for, here's another blank bit of paper here. So our way is gonna be that. <laughs> that is a way, okay? Or that's a road. So we have a, a starting point here, I'm gonna move over here, and we have an end point up here, okay? What we need to do though is, we need to extend this somehow. We need to extend that deck by a certain amount. So I'm going to say probably two meters that way and two meters that way. And then we're going to draw lines there. And then that's going to give us our two triangles. Now, because we know that this road is looked down on from this height, we only need to draw two triangles. We don't need to draw a quad because the, the road will never get seen from the bottom. And I'm going to look at the road like that. So we just need those four triangles. So we need to calculate uh, from, from this point here, uh, way off here. So from this point here, we need to calculate these points up here. And then from this point here, we need to calculate these two points here. Okay, so that's what we need to to achieve, and I'm gonna to move to the small webcam again. Okay. 
So where are our two points? Well, our two points are, um, well, we need to do this as well. So, um, and so we'll get these values in here while we're at it. So I'm going to do these here. Now, in reality, you could probably abstract this as well because a lot of this code is exactly the same. So just letting you know. Um, okay, so our two points, our points in space, are determined by this value here. So we'll do a yield return and all there as well because we want to sort of make this go faster. All right. Um, so we, in reality, we probably want to have, um, we probably want to know how long that section is of road because we really want to, like if we look at our, if we look at this here, um, if I bring this up here. So we look at our road here. This is a, a square piece of road. So we want to, we, we really want to have it so that um, this is split evenly amongst uh, elements in the road. We'll, we'll look at that later on. Right now, we'll probably just stretch the crap out of it. Uh, but in reality, we, we want to repeat it a certain number of times, depending on how long the road is. So let's say that the road is 90 meters long and <clears throat> each one of those sections is one unit long then we'd want to stretch it out 90 times that kind of idea all right so to calculate uh, vector one um, i know that up um, if i use the cross product uh, I know that I can calculate from any two vectors, I can calculate the the, ver the vector that is uh, um, um, orthogonal at, at 90 degrees to both of those vectors. So if I say um, uh, vector 3 v1 right is vector three dot cross and then this is going to be um, the cross product between those two vectors so well um, let me do vector three diff equals v2 minus v1 so my difference is vector two between vector one um, and I want to normalize that. <clears throat> and so my, um, I don't really want to call it V1 and V2. I just want to call that um, S1 because it's not really my It's not really my vectors. My vectors are going to be the ones that we calculate. So the, the calculation is based on the cross product. Um, so, like I said, if, if, we've, if we have two vectors, we have a vector here and a vector here, I can calculate this vector here based on uh, these two vectors. Um, and similarly, I, if I have this vector, I can negate it, and then I have this point here. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, based on on this here so I know that this one is my difference vector I need to create one that is the up vector from that and then add that to my starting point so my my other vector is going to be um, so it's going to be vector 3 v1 is going to be uh, s1 plus and then it's going to be vector three cross uh, diff with vector three dot up. 
So that's my y vector. Uh, vector 3, v, um, 2 is going to be s1 minus vector 3 dot cross diff comma vector 3 dot up. And then um, vector four or vector three is going to be s two minus vector three dot cross diff comma vector three dot up. Uh, that may actually be minus diff, but we'll check and see vector three vector. Four, Four, so the fourth vector equals s2 plus vector 3 dot cross diff comma vector 3 dot up. <clears throat> uh, so I could probably calculate this as just being the cross. So var cross equals that. So that's going to be cross and then these are all going to be cross. So this now gives me my four points that I want. So this is my four points that I, I have up here. And then from there, it's just a matter of doing exactly what we did um, here. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. Um, so I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to try it just by grabbing these values here. Um, and pasting them in there. And then for the normals, I'm going to add um, the normal for this is going to be vector three dot up because uh, I think the vector should be pointing upwards uh, rather than downwards. And then at the very end, I'm just going to do that there. So again, I'm leaving this as an exercise to you to clean this up. So maybe you want to take some of this, uh, the burden out of, of duplication, because a lot of this is duplicated um, and you want to um, do it properly. Um, do the proper object oriented way and take some of this stuff out, out of here. OK, so uh, I think that's it for roads. Um, we should be able to plug this in. I don't know why we're getting a null reference there. Preview window. Oh yeah, okay, don't worry about that. That's a Unity problem. So running this, um, let's see what we get for scenes. Well, we're getting we're getting magenta in there. Oh yeah, of course we need to actually multiply that by a certain amount. So that's going to be um, minus cross. And then that's going to be times, and then it's going to be two meters that way. So we might as well do everything there. So 2.0 f. So that's two meters, two meters width of um, lane. Um, because those are otherwise it's uh, otherwise we're multiplying by one. And we're going to get like really, really tiny roads. So these are the roads over here. Again, I don't look like we're getting many roads. Um, are they drawing upside down? Oh, they're they're purple. They are purple. And there's only half of them. Okay, well, we can deal with that. That's fine. So they're purple because I didn't drag across my material onto here, my road material. So now the roads shouldn't be purple. And the roads are indeed not purple. They are the road color. So you see that we're getting, I mean, 
this is uh, this is downtown Manhattan. So if I did, uh, let's change that to where are we? Mount Florida. Uh, Mount Florida, which is a smaller map. Um, it'll probably help us debug a little bit more. So yes, yeah, so there we have our roads there. So we're only getting half the triangles and it doesn't look like we're getting any, I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like any asphalt's getting drawn there at all. Um, what's the deal with that? Okay, let's see why we're getting only half the triangle drawn there. Um, okay, well, let's, let's draw both triangles and see what happens. There's the second, there's the third. Uh, I'm assuming, actually, before we do that, I think it's probably because these are out of order. So that's probably plus, and that should be minus. I think that might be the reason. So let's see if that is the reason. Ha! There we go. One fix. Okay, so that's that done. Um, why are we not getting? Why is the where's the line markings? That's bad. Okay. All right. The reason I'm not getting it is because I did not follow this example. So this one here has got UVs. So the UVs are set here and I want to be able to specify those values, so UV zero. So I'm gonna add those values there. All right, okay, so my new UVs are going to be, um, just vector two, so when I, so, <clears throat> So the reason why they're not coming up is because I didn't set the UVs. Now you notice there's some gaps in there as well. We'll need to figure a way out to do that. Or maybe maybe I'll, I'll leave that for you guys. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, you see there's a gap there. So when you're building this, we will need to create like a, another kind of splice in there. Uh, it shouldn't be a big deal, but yeah, they need to do that there, which means that this is going to have an overlap. So you see that this is one big object, uh, which is good because you can actually just grab it and just drag it out there. <clears throat> and similarly, that's an object there because it splits off there. This is an object here and so on. So the reason why is because I don't have any UVs. So I need to do vector3 uh, list vector two UVs equals new vector two list. Okay, and then I'm gonna add, for every one of these, I'm gonna add those UVs. So I wanna do 
vvs dot add new vector two, and this is going to be for the top corner there. So that's going to be zero zero uh, uvs dot add, and then it's going to be the triangle which is index one, index three. So that is going to be uh, new vector three. Um, what is that? Uh, um, one zero for that. So for vector three, uvs dot add new vector two. So vector two is um, vector one is that vector two is oh vector two is that. Uh, so vector two is going to be one zero, and then uh, vector three is going to be zero one, and then we have vector one one. I think that's right. And then we have our mf dot mesh dot uvs equals uvs dot two array. All right. So compile and then we should have our road. Hey. So there we go, we have our, our road here. So it's a bit, you know, howdy doody, there's a bit of a Z fighting there because they're both there. Uh, this one's a bit elongated, so if I again if I get rid of the map reader. We'll see that it gets a bit elongated because the the longer the road. Um, okay, let's try it with Toronto. So Toronto has quite a lot of of uh, uh, roads in it. So we'll fire this up, and we'll bring up the scene. So we should. Well, that's a funky looking building there. Whoa. It's a crazy looking building. And you see that our roads are starting to come in. So this one here is probably going to realize it's a railroad, but it's still going to paint all the roads on it. So once all these buildings start coming in, you see that now down here we have our, we have an intersection down here. Uh, we've got a couple of roads over here. Um, now there's no, there's no uh, information as to, to what type of roads these are so that's why it's not encoded in there so we don't know um, for sure what these these roads are doing but you can see here that we have uh, these are railroads so we have all these this network of roads here so this is looking pretty good uh, and again what we can do is we can turn off the the map reader and we can start to see that we have uh, a fairly good network of roads here um, along with uh, our buildings. So, I mean, there's a couple of issues here. So I'm guessing there's, these go under the building or that kind of thing. So um, you can see that we're, we're getting shadows on some of these things as well. So everything's, everything's looking good. Uh, in fact, I think it's looking so good. I think we'll, uh, we'll uh, stop the video there. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you didn't like. If you want to see more of these videos, just let me know. Uh, just leave a comment below. Uh, if you want to subscribe, get timely reminders. And again, there's no pressure. You don't have to do this. Uh, but there's a big subscribe button if you just want to mash that down there. Smash that like button. Uh, I don't know why I went Australian there. Maybe it didn't go Australian. But anyway, um, so yeah, thank you very much. I know everyone's time is important and, uh, and I appreciate uh, you stopping by. To, to have a look at these videos. So uh, thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.